Kellogg's Pep. The super delicious cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman who is today convinced that he knows the answer to the mystery of the talking cat. But right now, let's hear what Dan McCullough has in store for us. You know, fellas and girls, uh, they tell me that it's almost like a birthday every time Mother opens a new package of Kellogg's Pep. Because not only do you know that you'll have some mighty swell eating, but you also get a brand new bright-colored comic button. It's an exclusive prize. Maybe it'll be a true-to-life picture of Uncle Walt from Gasoline Alley, all dressed up in a bright red sports shirt. Or maybe Lillums from Harold Teen in her smart-looking skating cap and sweater. Maybe Superman himself, his red cape flying in the wind. And if it's a duplicate, well, that's even more fun because you can trade with your pals and still add another new button to your collection. What's more, wearing these swell buttons pinned on your jacket or your dress or cap is a real thrill. Everybody can see how many you've collected. So better get busy. See how soon that you can collect all 18 different buttons in the series. Just ask Mom to get you a package or two of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pet. Isn't that easy? You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. But a slick-looking comic button is your exclusive prize in every package of P-E-P Pep. Made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, the adventures of Superman. With editor Perry White on the verge of a nervous collapse, and Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen mysteriously missing after Lois's Siamese cat had seemingly talked to them in a human voice, Clark Kent suddenly revealed he was prepared to solve the baffling mystery. In the early hours before dawn, he brought Perry White and the cat to his apartment, and, as Kent predicted, a human voice was soon heard coming apparently from the cat. For a moment, Kent was puzzled. Then, like a bolt out of the blue, the answer to the mystery occurred to him. And he said he knew what made the cat talk. As we continue now, Perry White hurries across the room to where Kent is standing with the fawn-colored cat in his arms. Listen. Now explain yourself, Kent. What do you mean, you know what makes the cat talk? That's what I said, Chief. All right, you can get down now, Kitty. Come on. What are you letting it go for? We don't need it anymore. It has nothing whatever to do with the voice we heard. Huh? Uh, But you just said... I know, I know, I know what I said. But if I'd been holding an orange in my hands when we heard the voice, or or that little statue on the mantel, you'd swear the orange or the statue would talk. Are you crazy? Well, I know it sounds crazy, but it's really quite simple, Chief. Very ingenious, but simple, like most clever tricks. Look. There's your answer. What is? What answer? My wristwatch. Eh? And your wristwatch. Uh, my wristwatch? Yes, and Lois's wristwatch, and Jimmy's wristwatch. Will you kindly tell me what some people are talking about, Kent? Certainly. These watches the four of us received for Christmas are equipped with tiny radio receivers. Why? Yes. I can see that yours and mine are, and I'll stake anything I own that Lois's and Jimmy's are, too. What do you mean you can see that yours and mine are? I can't see anything of the kind. Oh, well, they look like ordinary watches to me. Well, I, I mean, that has to be the explanation. Look, Lois was in bed, and the cat was on the bed right near her when she thought it talked. All right, you were in bed, and the cat was next to your hand when you thought it talked. Jim was holding the cat in his lap when he thought it talked. And just now, I was holding it in my arms. My wristwatch was only, oh, an inch or two from the cat. Now, oh, so that proves that our watches are radio receivers, does it? Of all the dumb, idiotic brainstorms anyone ever had, this one takes the cake. Well, it's true, and I can... through my foot. Who ever heard of a watch being equipped with a radio receiver? Well, these are. These are? <laughs> I suppose they've got six tubes and condensers and loudspeakers and, and an automatic phonograph, too, oh, eh? All right, all right. Now, wait a minute. I'll prove it to you. Give me your watch. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. If I let a crackpot like you monkey around with it, it'll be ruined. Radio receiver. Okay, I'll use mine. I just suggested yours because it was broken. As a matter of fact, that was the tip-off. What tip-off? Well, I knew the cat couldn't really talk, and I'd made sure there were no hidden speaking devices in Lois's apartment, in Jim's house, and in your house, or in that deserted mansion on Myrtle Drive. Mm, golly, this catch on the band seems to be... Stuck. Mm, something in your brain is stuck, too. Now, go on. You decided the cat couldn't talk, and there were no hidden speaking devices, uh, so it had to be our wristwatches. Uh-huh. <laughs> Wonderful reasoning. I don't think... Well, now, wait a minute. I knew it had to be something you, Lois, and Jim wore or, or carried in common. 
But when I sent you into the bedroom tonight and the cat still seemed to talk in my lap, then I knew it had to be something I had in common with you three. And then I remembered the wristwatches the four of us got for Christmas. Wait a minute, huh? It's coming. Ah, there we are. There, now I can open the watch. Uh, it's too bad we can't open your head and let the hot air out. Now, look, Sherlock, even if you were right, have you forgotten that Mr. Grayson, the publisher of the Daily Planet, gave us these watches? Do you think Mr. Grayson would try to drive four of his employees out of their minds, make two of them disappear, and commit all the uh, the other hocus-pocus that's been going on? Yeah, I know. That's been stumping me. As well as the... Oh, fact... you admit something stumps you, eh? Now I'm getting it. There we are. All right, now, look, Chief. You see? Now, that tiny compact unit in the upper half of the case is the watch movement. Uh, what are those, those other little gadgets, uh, wires and stuff, and the rest of the case? That's the miniature radio receiver. Who says so? I do. I've seen some of the new radio developments that came out of the war. And now, you see there? That's the speaker amplifier, that tiny valve-like gadget that filament is attached to it. Mm, you can see that without a microscope? Of course I can. And furthermore... Oh, you're crazy, you're crazy. No, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. One of those little glass thingamajigs fitted around the inside of the case. Those? Yeah, they, they look like glass beads. They're radio tubes. Radio tubes? Mm-hmm. And no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Wait till I get my glasses on. Now, now wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah. Now. Hey, they still look like glass beads and... No. No, no. No, I, I think they are radio tubes. Of course they are. This little set must be tuned to a certain wavelength. Undoubtedly a very high frequency or the government monitors would have detected it. The voice you thought came from the cat, and Jim's voice, and Lois's voice, and all the other spooky voices you heard in the deserted house were transmitted over that wavelength and received by your wristwatch. Good Godfrey. If, if that's true, Kent, I'm why... sure it is, and I never noticed it. I, I just took for granted it was an ordinary watch. But, 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 but who? Why? Uh, I don't know who. Yes. You, we've got to find out where the transmitter is. Exactly, but how? Uh, there must be some way. Well, if there is, I don't know it. I was sure that coupe that followed us here from your house had something to do with it, but maybe, maybe it was the coupe. There might have been a transmitter in it. No, there wasn't. Well, how do you know? Why, well, I, I just know. Oh, nonsense, nonsense. It was dark, and the car was traveling along behind us. Well, how could you see if there was a radio transmitter in it or not? I'm just sure there wasn't. Anyhow, the car drove away from here before the cat talked. So what? They could transmit from some other place, couldn't they? Now, look, Kent, I'll get Inspector Henderson on the phone. You describe the coupe to him. I tell you, there was no transmitter in that coupe. And besides... Uh-oh. What's the matter? A hearse. A what? A black funeral hearse. Two blocks over on Pine Street. It's speeding away. A hearse? Two blocks away? What are you talking about? Remember the man who stopped Lois's taxi cab the day she disappeared was driving a funeral hearse. A tall, thin man, the taxi driver said. This man is tall and thin. Great Scott, I wonder. You wonder what? What tall man? It, uh, it all stopped looking as if you were seeing through walls. Well, there's some queer things in that hearse. Can't quite make them out from here, but... Oh, get that crazy look off your face, Kent. You're going to pieces again. Now, come on. Try to pull yourself together. Don't you worry about me. Just keep your fingers crossed that I'm right about the hearse and that it leads me to Jimmy and Lois. I'll see you later, Chief. Now, wait. Come back here. Where are you going? Going after that hearse. Now, what, what hearse? How can you see a hearse blocks away from inside this apartment? Call it a gift. Come on, Chief. Come back here. You're out of your mind, Kent. Come back here, I said. Kent! Kent! Good God, Brady, he's as mad as a hatter. Kent! Kent, come back here. Kent! Frantically, Perry White shouts after Clark Kent, who has rushed from the apartment. Will the black funeral hearse lead him to Jimmy Olsen and Lois Lane? We'll return in a moment for the startling climax of today's episode. But first, here again is your announcer. You know, gang, if someone should just hand you a full set of 18 different comic buttons from packages of Kellogg's Pep all at once, why, that wouldn't be half so much fun as collecting them right along. Of course, you're always mighty proud to wear these slick-looking buttons on your jacket or your dress or cap, but... You'd hate to miss the thrill of seeing which button is inside every time Mom opens a new package of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal. And you'd feel kind of out of it if you couldn't trade duplicates with your pals and sort of race with them to see who can collect the most different buttons. This way, every single button you get is a brand new prize, something to be mighty proud of. The colors are so clear and sharp, the pictures of your favorite funny paper characters so true to life that, well, it seems like getting pictures of your old friends. And you know what the best part is? These swell comic buttons are so easy to get. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. But every time Mom opens a new package of Kellogg's Pep, there's your exclusive prize. Better get busy on your collection, gang. Ask Mom to get you plenty of P-E-P Pep. Made by Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. (laughs) 
hoping that a black funeral hearse driven by a tall, thin man might lead him to the missing Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen, Clark Kent rushed from his apartment and resumed his true identity of Superman. He is now streaking through the dark sky, high above the hearse which speeds along Metropolis Boulevard, almost fully deserted in this early morn before dawn. Just as I thought, there is a radio transmitter in that hearse. That's where the cat's voice and all the other strange voices came from. Well, there's nobody in the hearse but the driver, so he must be Mr. Voice himself. Okay, I'll just follow him, and he ought to lead me to Lois and Jim. Hey, he's certainly kicking the speed laws around. Faster! Uh-oh, swinging off toward the parkway. After him! Wow, look at him take that turn on two wheels. Lucky for him there's no traffic at this hour. Wait! He's going right through a red light. There comes another fast car from the side street. They're going to crash. Down to them. Go! No, oh, too late. That hearse overturned. I've got to get that driver out. The driver of the other car doesn't look too badly hurt. It's a miracle. Wait a minute. Oh, here comes another car. A taxi. This hearse and that car piled up. Come on out here and give me a hand, will you? Sure, you bet. Holy smokes, what a crash. Hey, who are you? Never mind the questions now. I'll lift the hearse, you pull the driver out. You what? There we go. Jeepers, you are lifting it. Holy smokes, that costume. You're... You're Superman. Yes, yes, now get him out, will you? Gently, though. Okay. Careful. Have you got him? Yeah. Easy with him. All right, I'll put him down. I'll stand the hearse up. There we are. How is he? I don't know. He don't look too good to me. Here, wait. Step aside. Let me see, will you? Uh-oh. He's done for, huh? Yes. Now, how am I going to find Lois and Jimmy? How? How? Worried? Superman gazes down at the still figure of the tall, thin driver of the strange funeral hearse, the man who he feels was his only clue to Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen's whereabouts. Tomorrow, as Superman battles what seems to be a hopeless predicament, we learn what happened to Jimmy and Lois. So don't fail to be with us then. There's plenty of excitement still to come, so tune in tomorrow and every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, for the mystery of the talking cat in The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday. Same time, same station. By the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman... See your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Publications.